Hey, welcome to another Urban Aviary video. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how you can bring quail home tomorrow for less than $100. Now this means you'll be bringing quail home, brooding them, and raising them from chicks into adults. This doesn't take into account uh, whatever permanent caging system you're going to have for them. Now I will give a bonus at the end that you can spend a little more than $100, about $136, and that will get you a system to keep them inside your house. So you literally, for $136, could bring everything home tomorrow, including the baby chicks, and start raising quail in your house. Um, I'll also talk to you about where you can source quail and how you can find them and bring chicks home, or even get eggs if you want to, to incubate. Um, so we'll get into that, but first I want to give a quick plug for my uh, new website. You guys should check that out, urbanaviary.com. I'm now on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, have a Facebook group that you can join and uh, uh, start discussions there. Um, so check that out, urbanaviary.com, and you can find all my links to all my social media there. So let's talk about um, the materials you'll need to bring home, and we'll break them down, and I'll talk to you about how much each one of those things is going to cost. The first thing you're going to want to get is a tote. Um, I've seen them as cheap as $5 at Walmart for an 18-quart um, tote, these plastic totes. It doesn't matter what color they are. Some are clear, some are black, red. There's... All sorts of types, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you get one with a lid. Um, and the, for this system, we're gonna be saying we're getting about six birds to bring home, six quail. So the size of the tote is really dependent on how many birds you're gonna bring home. Quail are really teeny tiny, um, and they, they do grow pretty quickly and get big pretty quickly, so they need to take that into account when you choose the size of tote you're gonna need. But an, an 18 gallon for six birds is is okay. That, that'll work just fine. If you wanna make, make it bigger, that's totally fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. So that tote will cost you anywhere from $5 to $20 if you get the really big one, and like I use when I'm uh, brooding, you know, 50 to 100 birds. Uh, I'll get a big one like that. You obviously, for a few quail that you're keeping in your house, you don't need to uh, have anything quite that big. One other thing I wanna mention is that when you get a tote and bring it home, make sure you get the lid for it. They're usually sitting on the shelf above where the totes are at. Make sure you get the lid because you'll need that uh, for when they get older, for a couple weeks old, they can actually start to jump out. They can you know, get enough lift that they can actually get up and out of the tote. So you wanna make sure to keep that lid because you can convert that lid into something where you can still put it on and they obviously aren't going to suffocate or anything to where you can use that as a lid and they and still be able to see down inside of it and everything and obviously air can still get in um, but i'll put a link right here um, to one of my other videos that shows you how you can do that and turn your lid into a, a good top for your brooder the next thing you're going to want is some bedding for them i use pine shavings now you can get pine shavings at uh any of your local feed stores, IFA, Cal Ranch, Tractor Supply, those are some of ours around here, but anywhere um, that, that carries pet supplies or uh, farm and ranch supplies should have pine shavings. Now, they don't have to have e-pine. It can be cedar or, or aspen or whatever else. It doesn't really matter. They just need that for bedding. Um, and that costs for a, a pretty big, large um, uh, bundle of it. It costs about 15 bucks for a pretty large one. So it's not expensive. You, I, I would get a large one so they don't have to uh, uh, keep going back to the store for, for smaller ones. They, they don't go through it super fast. You will need to change it out in the brooder um, once every couple of days unless you want to just put a small layer down and then do the deep litter method and just start putting more shavings in a little bit each day and piling it in there. You can do it that way too so you don't have to change it out every day. Uh, but that's the next thing you want to get is pine shavings, and that'll be about $15 if you get a, a really big uh, big container of it. The next thing you're going to want to get is a feeder and a waterer. Now, I recommend starting out just getting the easy plastic uh, mason jar type screw-on base feeders and waterers. You can get a matching pair of them for $12 on Amazon. That's on Prime, so it's free shipping if you have Amazon Prime. And for 12 bucks, you can get a feeder and a water, both of the same style, and they match. Um, but those I recommend starting out with. There are better options um, for feeders that are more uh, spill-free because quail are kind of messy and will fling a lot of their food around. So if you want to minimize feed waste, then um, after the brooding process, you can go to something else. But just to keep it simple, I'd start with, with uh, that type, with the plastic mason jar screw-on base style. Uh, just because it's it's easy, and when they're little chicks like that, they don't waste a ton of feed anyways. They don't eat enough to, to waste a whole ton of it, and the feed's not that expensive anyways. 
So start out with those basic feeders and waterers. There are other waterers you can use. Uh, this is one that I use. I can't remember where I found it at. Um, I'm trying to find, find where that's at and I'm having a hard time finding them online. Uh, but that style um, is really nice because uh, I'll tell you later on when I show you how I keep mine indoors. It makes it a lot easier to, to use this kind of, and in a brooder, it's really great too, because you're not trying to fill water up and screw a lid on and then dump it upside down and not spill any of it. And this just makes it uh, a lot easier. Uh, I will say that I'm looking into building these and making some and selling them somewhere around $15 each. Um, I know where all the material materials are to uh, build them. Um, if I get enough of you guys that want some, email me or message me on this video and let me know and I can do one run of them and we'll see how it works. But if you do want that style, um, message me and let me know and we'll see what we can get worked out. Uh, there are other feeders that are more spill proof too. I'll work out something to try and get something like that made. And if I can find something that I think is good enough, I'll uh, put a link in also for a better feeder. But like I said, use those basic ones to start with. When they're little, they don't waste a ton. You can still use it for when they're adults until you find something better. And for 12 bucks for a pair of them, you can't beat that. So just start out with that. And a quick note on the waterers, guys. Um, there's the type that you can get that I showed in that first picture that's just the standard screw-on base for chickens and other poultry. But there's another one that's a smaller one that I forgot about that I use that's for quail or for small chicks. The one here on the left is the one you'll want for the small chicks. And that's if you can get your hands on that one, get that one. The one on the right is the standard type. If you use that standard type, you want to put uh, lots of little pebbles and rocks around in it so that they have to peck around them to get to the water and they can't get wet. Because if they get wet in the brooder, even if they got heat on them, they will die from getting too wet. So use that one on the left if you can get a hold of it. I'll put a link down in the description that uh, has a place you can get them on Amazon. The next thing you're going to want is one of the clamp-on brooding lamps. Uh, you'll want to keep one of these clamped onto the side of that tote for about probably the first week, week and a half, maybe even two weeks just to be safe. Um, if you're keeping them, in, keeping them indoors, uh, a week to two weeks will be plenty. Uh, if you're keeping them, keeping them outside where um, it's not as warm as it is inside, you might want to for you know two to three weeks. But um, indoors, it's really not that big of a deal. If you keep them in, inside, uh, that'll be fine. One to, one to two weeks will be, be just fine to keep heat lamp on them. Once they're feathered out, uh, you don't have to worry about them. They'll be, they'll be plenty warm. Uh, make sure you get, uh, if you're looking online to get them, some of them don't sell the bulb and the lamp together. You'll need to get the bulb, and I prefer getting the red bulbs uh, so that it doesn't emit a ton of light and then they can sleep. It's hard for them to sleep if you get the general heat lamps that are actually have a you know, bright light to them. They have the clear lens on them. Those will keep them awake and then it screws up their sleeping cycle and it's not a huge deal If that's all you can find go ahead and get it But if you can get the red ones or they have some that are more expensive They're like 20 bucks just for the bull, but they're uh, a heat emitting element You can screw into them that put off no light at all um, They're made more for reptiles and, and uh, things like that So you can get one of those if you want to spend more money But if not just get the uh, get the red lamp is what I'd, I'd suggest getting and for 20 bucks You should uh, be able to get both on Amazon shipped to you for about 20 bucks for the lamp and for the bulb. The next thing you're gonna want to get them is feed. Um, you're gonna to want to get them a turkey starter or a game bird starter. Um, most of your uh, feed stores and uh, local farm and ranch supply stores will have it uh, and they should have it year round. Um, and it's the feed they're gonna eat for the rest of their lives. It's gonna be a crumble or a mash. Usually it's a mash when it's a starter of any kind. Um, and it's going to be somewhere between 24 and 30 percent protein. Anywhere in those ranges is fine. Um, a turkey starter or a game bird starter, either one will work great. Um, it's going to be about, well, what I pay is, for a 50-pound bag, I pay $17 for a turkey starter um, that I get here locally. You can get it cheaper than that, more expensive than that. It depends on what you're wanting. If you want, you know, organic, non-GMO, that type of stuff, you're going to be spending more, and it's going to be harder to find. But if you just want the, the basic generic stuff, which will work just fine for them, it won't be hard for you to find a 50 pound bag for around that $17 price range. And then the only other thing you need is the birds themselves. Uh, in my area, there's almost always somebody selling Caternix quail chicks, day old chicks. And I mean, that's year round, um, all year round, even in the winter. It's not just springtime. You don't know, it's not like chickens and ducks where you need to wait till springtime to get your birds. You can get them anytime you want. There's usually going to be somebody that has chicks or if they don't have them, they will incubate some for you, um, special order. 
Uh, the easiest place to find them, Craigslist. Craigslist uh, will usually have uh, somebody within an hour driving distance to a few hours. So you might spend a Saturday driving out to somebody to get your chicks and coming back. But once you've got them, if you end up ever wanting more, you can just breed your own. It's super easy. They're really productive. So uh, look on Craigslist. There are other ways of getting them, getting live chicks shipped to you, getting fertile eggs shipped to you to incubate. If you're looking to go one of those routes, uh, email me at jaron at urbanaviary.com and I'll see if I can help you find somebody locally close to you. Um, it's, it's best to get chicks shipped from the closest person. Um, I mean, if you have to get them from somewhere else further away, that's okay. Uh, but I can try and get you in touch with the right person to get birds and eggs shipped to you if you want to go that route. So go ahead and email me if you're interested in that. Also remember to take a box with you when you get baby chicks from people. Sometimes they don't have any boxes left or they haven't thought of it and they just expect you to bring a box and haven't said anything to you. So make sure to bring a small box to put your chicks in just in case they don't have anything for you. But other than that, I mean, that's everything you need. Uh, chicks are going to be $1 to $2 a piece for the birds. So say it's $2 per bird and you get six of them, that's 12 bucks. That means for everything all together, you're spending $86. And that's everything you need to bring quail home, have them in your house, start brooding them and raising them to get to be adults. Now, if you have caging systems figured out, outdoor caging or something, or a, an aviary or, or whatever you're going to do, then that'll be additional, obviously. But there's a really cool thing you can do, which is what I've tried doing, and so far it's worked out really well, and that's keeping them indoors in an aquarium or terrarium. You can find those on Craigslist, and it's really easy to find them in the $50 range for a large aquarium or terrarium. Terrariums are usually, in my area, a little more expensive. An old aquarium um, is uh, usually not quite as expensive. And it's nice because people get fish, get tropical fish, or, or whatever kind of fish they're getting, realize they don't want to hassle with it or don't like it, and they sell all their stuff for, for dirt cheap. Uh, I've even seen some on Craigslist where you can go buy their whole setup, sell the fish, because some of these fish are pretty valuable, and the price of those fish will pay for the aquarium. So that might be one good way where you could even get that aquarium for, for, for free, essentially. Uh, so far, it's worked really well for me. I haven't had smell issues. I, I put a layer of shavings down and then every couple days I put some more on top of it. And they do a lot of scratching and kicking around and digging around anyways and it kind of mixes it up. But it hasn't had a bad smell at all. Um, if once it does, if it does start smelling, you can put more down or scoop it out and put, put new shavings in it. Uh, but so far it's worked out really good for me. We really enjoy having them in the house and that's a really easy way to, uh, to bring them home, have everything you need, keep them in the house and literally have everything you need to bring home at once uh, to keep quail and have quail. Um, that could work if you use the aquarium instead of the tote. Maybe you wouldn't need the tote, um, and you could just use the aquarium as the brooder. I would still get the brooder separately and use a tote separately just so that you could also move them into that tote temporarily while you're cleaning out the aquarium to get all the old shavings out when you're putting new shavings in. So that might be something else to think about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to go to urbanaviary.com, check out my new website. Go gentle on me. I designed it myself. It's my first time ever using a cheap uh, program. So it'll hopefully get better in the future. So go gentle on me. Uh, but check out the blog there. You can also uh, get to all my uh, social media sites, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I really want to turn that Facebook page into something cool where uh, guys and gals in this community can go together and talk and, and hang out and, and get to know each other and help each other solve problems and get each other involved uh, with, with urban agriculture. So thanks again for watching, you guys, um, and we'll see you next time. And until then, remember, you guys can do this too.